Hey everyone, welcome to Livestream Stars. I'm Ross Brand. This is the show where we feature talented broadcasters delivering high quality content across live stream platforms. The Livestream Stars is brought to you by LivestreamUniverse.com, where you can find past shows, updates, future schedules, and a whole lot more. Also, you can find our updates every single day. Well, Monday through Friday, Friday covers the weekend. Our daily live stream update on our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash Livestream Universe. And our guest tonight is Bree Kelly. She's from Casual Fridays, a social media marketing agency out in San Diego. Um, she's the community manager, focuses on marketing and social media. Also co-hosts from time to time the podcast, uh, Social Media Social Hour. Uh, host is Tyler Anderson. Bree helps out with that. She also is a blogger does the What's Hot in Social articles on the Casual Fridays blog post. She's also been published in Millennial CEO and other publications. And she's up on the latest issues concerning millennials, work, career, and a variety of different issues. And welcome. It's great to talk to you. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, it's great. Great to have you. Um, so how did you, you, you live in Ohio. How did you end up working for a social media agency out of San Diego while still living in Ohio? That's my favorite story to tell. I love, I love telling this story again and again. Um, at the time I was working for a software company as a social media marketing manager and marketing associate for an agency on the West side of Cleveland, um, kind of doing some work for them. And while doing that, I was doing a lot of blogging on the side. I was working, what, excuse me, uh, millennial CEO, ego free media group. I was like talking to them a lot. And during that I met, you know, Brian Fanzo, Rachel Miller, Kristen Cardos. We were all kind of talking together and Brian was speaking at social media day, San Diego. And he was like, Hey, I'm coming out to speak. We've all been blogging together for like a year. You should come out and meet us. Mind you, I had never met any of these people in person. So I thought it was a really great idea to book a plane ticket and fly to California by myself. So while doing that, I attended Social Media Day San Diego, which is an event put on by Casual Fridays. And at after the event, we were all kind of connecting in a networking event. And I met Tyler. We had a conversation. And after talking about an hour, he was like, hey, you know, are you looking for a job? <laughs> and I was like, you know, I'm always open to things. And uh, he tweeted me. It was a Saturday night. We had a conversation. He tweeted me Monday. And I started almost two weeks later. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. So you've been you've been working sort of telecommuting or is there an office in Ohio or how does it how does it work your relationship with Casual Fridays? There is an office in San Diego. There is not an office in Ohio. So I work completely by myself on an island in Cleveland with them. It's uh, a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of Skype, a lot of FaceTime. Um, Slack is a huge tool for us that we use for communication. So I, you know, communicate with them that way. We have um, smaller clusters of people in Florida, New Orleans, Atlanta. So like they have other coworkers there with them that they can communicate with on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm just kind of out by myself over here, but I enjoy it. Working from home is fun and um, it gives me a lot of flexibility to do a lot of different things. Oh, that's really cool. So talk about your, your role in the podcast. Um, I'm actually interested in this because I'm thinking of converting my daily updates into a podcast as well. And I'm trying to figure out all the RSS feed and hosting and all that stuff. But talk about your role in, in the show that you've had the, the past year. Yeah, it's really interesting. So I had never been into podcasting before, and Tyler's had the show since 2014, I believe. I, we just had our 150th episode, or here he had wow. his 150th episode, and I we've got you know recorded through a couple of weeks out. But when they brought me on over a year ago, I first started helping out with just the show notes. So I would you know listen to you know, kind of like the conversation that they had, I would pull out pertinent pieces of information, put them in WordPress. And that was the long and the short of my involvement in it. Over the last few months, Tyler reached out to me and was like, Hey, you know, would you just like to be come on and be a guest, or kind of co host with me a little bit, get your feet wet with it, because I, you know, spoke on other people's podcasts, and I had some familiarity with it, but nothing on the back end. 
Um, after doing that, and we got a lot of positive feedback on it, I'm on usually about every other episode with him now. Occasionally, we'll do a couple more back to back, but um, it's doing really well. He's gotten a lot of write ups lately with Entrepreneur. Uh, Buffer just did one. HubSpot listed him as one of the top social media podcasts. So they're getting a lot of good. Um, you know, publicity on it. And it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of good information. So if you haven't checked the show out, I would definitely recommend it. It's the social media social hour. You can find it on iTunes and Google play. So yeah, it's pretty cool. So we're talking with Bree Kelly from casual Fridays here on live stream stars going out to Facebook, um, trying to Get the chat really going on Facebook, so we're we're just uh, kind of giving out the Facebook link. It's it's RossBrand.live for anybody who needs a shortcut. If you want to share it, please do. Um, hey, I see Mitch is there, Mitch Jackson. Um, also, uh, Brad is there. So uh, great to see you guys and and everybody else. Just send, enter something in the chat so we we know you're here. Um, so we want to get into a, co- a topic that is a little bit controversial about social media. Uh, because all you you ever hear a lot of social media gurus or whatever saying is transparency, transparency, transparency. Share it all: your ups, your downs, your highs, your lows, your your goods, your bads, your day from beginning to end. Right? And maybe that's not the way to go. I, I've always felt that there's some times during the day where you know it's nice to have some privacy for yourself and share and connect with the people you're with. So um, I know you wrote a really good blog post about this. What are your, what are your thoughts now, you know, a little bit later on about this topic and, you know, how much sharing is too much sharing? Well, I guess I can kind of touch on what, like first, before we get into that, I'll just touch on how, what kind of what inspired that article or what right. expired that blog post. So I was actually out at a conference, a social media conference in New York. I was in Manhattan. It was like a smaller workshop. It wasn't a big event, but the food came out and like lunch came out. And so like, I went to, what do you do when people put food in front of you? Like I started eating, like I was hungry. I was like ready to go. And you got to take a picture. (laughs) Well, somebody literally like somebody gave me the nastiest look and they had their phone up and they were like, aren't you going to Instagram your lunch? And they were like so serious. And they like started bringing lighting out and these white screens. And I was like, this is a joke. Like this is like, and I get it. I'm all about social media marketing, but this was like a private small workshop. This wasn't like a big conference. This wasn't a photo shoot for a restaurant or a tourism group. We were just eating lunch and it wasn't like a beautiful food. I think we had like turkey sandwiches and I'm like, this is so boring. Like, why do we need to do this? And my whole week was just like people stopping to capture moments that I just felt like were really I mean, they're they're important, I guess, but kind of insignificant in the scheme of things and like the week and what we were doing. So I came home from that event and I was like all fired up and wrote this article, like, I'm not going to Instagram my lunch. And I was like, so angry about it, but, um, you know, and then, but you know, I like, as I've been in the space more, I get it. I get personal branding. I get authenticity and being genuine and transparency, but there is a time and a place, you know, I've been involved in social for years now, but a lot of people don't know about my personal life. They don't know if I'm single, dating, married. People don't know a ton about my family and I prefer it that way. And it's not because, you know, I'm not authentic or I have something to hide or I'm being disingenuine. It's just my life. You know, it's a different, it, it's important as part of your personal brand, but I mean, sharing some of that, but there's a line. My personal brand isn't going to be everything about me all of the time. I'm going to keep some of that private. Yeah. I mean, one of the reasons why I've never kind of really gotten going with Snapchat or either or Instagram stories is because I just don't need another channel where I'm going to promote stuff or talk about what I'm working on or whatever. I feel like I have enough of those and it would be overkill to people who already follow me elsewhere. Um, But when I'm with friends, when I'm on a date, when I'm having dinner with family, when I'm having just an afternoon out on a nice day where I don't have to worry about work or anything, right? I just don't want to interrupt it to be like, okay, now I'm going to share this moment with every, like, it just seems like sometimes, I don't know, I want to engage on what I want to engage with. But when I'm having a good moment in my personal life, I don't necessarily feel like 
I need to share it. And certainly when I'm having a bad moment, I don't think it's everybody's business. So, um, and, and people exactly. think they have to share everything. And I'm like, you don't, you don't. <laughs> exactly. But see, that's the thing to me, sharing, like if you're really, really into the oversharing thing and you're going for the genuine, authentic, authentic, like full transparency, you should be sharing the bad as much as the good. But those aren't things we always want to share with people. I mean, right. if, I mean, if you're like fully committed to that strategy, then I think you need to do both. Because I have, it's, it's, I get so torn on this topic, because I love social media, I've made a career out of this, like mm -hmm. I spend my personal time doing this and my professional time. But, you know, it is my where I get hung up on it is that it becomes people's highlight reel, right? People use it to make other people jealous. Right. It's the highlight reel of people's lives. And then, you know, our friends and family sit at home scrolling, you know, looking at just the good things that we're sharing with people. And that hurts. And I'm not out here to make other people feel that way. And it kind of hit me the other day because so I can work anywhere, right? So I can travel right. a lot. I work where there's Wi-Fi. I'm, I'm a remote employee. So I, you know, over the summer, I went to go see my sister in Florida and I was there for a few weeks and I traveled to California a lot. And I was out in Cleveland, you know, where I live once and someone came up to me and they were like, oh, you live this, this lavish life and you travel all the time and you do all of these things. And I started laughing and I was like, it's so funny. But in reality, I'm on my couch in my pajamas every day, cranking workout with a laptop. Like, yeah, I get to do these really cool things, but I don't show the behind the scenes every day, me on my couch. Glamour with four of cups working of from home. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just so glamorous. <laughs> I mean, and that's what it is. And I guess, you know, you could say my bad for not sharing that, but you know, it's, I don't know. I just don't feel like people need to see that side of me. That's not really like who I am when it comes to my day to day, because I don't think it's interesting. Like I am not, I mean, this sounds so bad, but I don't want to say I'm not self-centered enough to think that people care what I'm doing all of the time. Right. Right. And I don't think, I mean, there's a different way you're on when like the camera's on you and videos on you and audios on you. I mean, like I worked in radio when I was younger, so I know there's a different way you have to think about how you communicate and what you say. And, you know, you have to be a little more self-conscious about certain things than if you're just letting yourself go with your friends and your family and, you know, people close to you, or you just want to go for a walk by yourself, whatever it is that you want to do to get away from yeah. things. Right. And so I don't want to feel like I have to be on 24 seven, like the camera's on me 24 seven and I'm living in a reality TV show, which is why I, I enjoy um, like these live stream talk shows like we're doing here where I'm talking to somebody, we're, we're engaging about a subject matter of interest or something that you're doing that's interesting and, and whatever. And then the show ends and that's it. But I don't do a lot of like periscoping and Facebook live from my phone and stuff like that. Like I just, like you were saying, I don't feel it's that interesting that I'm walking down the street or I'm going to pick up something for dinner or whatever. I just, you know, I know people can write really creative stories about this stuff, but that, that takes a lot of time and energy. And I just, you know, it's just, for me, it doesn't fit my personality, but here, here's another thing. I think there's a difference between honesty and transparency, right? Yeah. Like transparency seems to be like you have to sort of like put the shade up and let everybody see in all the time. Whereas I value kind of honesty more, right? When I talk on camera, when I talk on mic and I talk about what I'm doing or business or live streaming or whatever, you know, you're getting from me like what I really think. You're getting the honest view, you're getting mm -hmm. info, but the areas that I don't delve into politics, religion, relationships, things like that, it doesn't really matter, right? Like, I don't think it, so I'm not, may not be transparent in all areas, but in the areas that I talk publicly about, I do think it's important to be honest because Absolutely. you have a digital footprint now. And if you're not honest, it's going to catch up to you, but also it's just a better way, way to live. What do you think about that? Like transparency versus, versus honesty? I love that. I think you articulated, I think that's what I was trying to say, but you just articulated that much more eloquently than I did. Um, <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. That's, that's exactly what it is. I'm, I mean, you're honest about it saying you don't think people need to see all of that in your life. And I'm honest when I say the same thing, I don't think people need to see every area into my life. That's, you know, personal like that. Transparency is incredibly important when it comes to business or, you know, your viewpoints. If you're going to come out here and like, 
if I was going to come out here and say, okay, we're going to talk about social sharing, but I was just going to give the sugar coated watered down version of what I felt about it. I mean, that's just, I mean, that's not really being honest or transparent. I'm going to come out and say like when I'm committing to talk about a topic on camera or in public or write a blog post about it, I'm being completely transparent in that. Does that make sense? Right. Right. Like if I'm yeah. committing to put myself there, I'm all in on it. Right. Right. And and one of the things like I realized when I worked in, in radio in, and covering sports in particular was how how much like everybody had an agenda, right? Like when I watched on TV before I got into it, I always thought like all the commentators and stuff are just telling you what they really think. And then I got into it and I realized all these guys have agendas. They want to get the next job. They want to get back into coaching. They want to, yeah, they're, they're working as a commentator, but they want to play again. They don't want to offend this owner. This person has a lot of weight in that market. They want to, I mean, you know, like, Telling you what they really think is like the last thing on the list after they've checked all True. the agenda. And to me, that wasn't honest. But that's more right. important that you're honest in what you do than than you're transparent. And and I just don't think even the people who are preaching transparency and say, you know, oh, yeah, if you're going through something, put it out there, tell everybody. I'm not sure that they're doing it either. Now, if it's right. their job, right, like if their job is simply their personality, right, you're like – like a Gary Vaynerchuk or something where you're making money off of just being out there and being raw and whatever, then I, I think it's different than the average person who may have to fill out a job application at some point or may have to win a client and can't afford to lose that client because they didn't like your opinion on who's running for president or they didn't like, you know, what you said about, uh, a certain restaurant in town or whatever that every feeling you have and every thought that goes through your head, unless you have bleep you money, <laughs> you can't right. keep doing that well, all it's day. true. But how many of us are actually in that position though? Like how right. many of us are actually in that position to have our personal brand being, or I don't want to even say your personal brand or being that transparent out there all the time, like, okay. And profitable. It's just, right. I mean, to me, it's vain. <laughs> I mean, right. And and also, if you talk about everything, then when you go to like a conference or something, that thing you really don't want to talk about when you're networking or whatever, but the first thing people ask you about, right? It'll yeah. be like, so what happened with that? Uh, like, oh, no, not here. <laughs> well, yeah, if you shared true. it to everybody on Facebook, then it's probably going to come up. So what is the, like, what do you see is, cause it's kind of a balanced issue, right? Of course mm -hmm. we want to share some of ourselves. Otherwise we just become work machines or whatever. So right. what, do you, what do you think is the good side? Like, what do you like when you look at social media and you see people sharing into their lives? You know, it's really, it's tough because I even struggle with this. I don't think there's a clear cut, fine line answer to this question. I've seen people, and I mean, and even with the space, I think a lot of us, like our professional profiles and our personal profiles have become the same thing. Right. So initially I used to have separate profiles for each. And then I was like, I can't keep up with this. I can't post on two Instagrams and two Twitters and it just becomes too much. So you have to make decisions what do you actually want out there? What actually represents you as a person? And you kind of have to like sit yourself down and have a conversation. What do I stand for? And what do I want to represent me personally and professionally? It shouldn't really be that different. Um, right. And, you know, it, and it is for some people. And, it, you know, it kind of was for me. And I had to have that hard talk with myself and say, you know, where are our priorities here? What do we lie? What do we want to be when people, what do people want to see about us when they Google me? Right? right. I mean, right. that's, that's huge. What we all have to ask ourselves. I mean, like, think about it when, when someone types your name into Google, what's going to come up and what do you want to represent right. you? What foot do you want forward out there? And, you know, as much as we want to share our drinks from Friday night or Saturday night, or, you know, what we're doing over the weekend or on our vacation with our friends, is that what we want to be our digital footprint? Right. So, right. I mean, I'm, I struggle with that too. Some days I post photos or what I'm doing, not that they're like completely scandalous or terrible, but I'm like, Ooh, did everyone really need to know what I did Saturday night? Probably not. You know, if I don't want, I mean, not that there's anything bad about it, but do you right. want your future employer to know what you did last Saturday night? You know, I mean, so those are right, things, right. um, you know, it just, it's, it's stuff like that, that you need to think about and put into perspective. Um, 
or like 50 selfies. Like, does your future employer want to see another <laughs> selfie of you? I don't know. And maybe, maybe if you're a model, if they, they look, do, if, but right. Otherwise, if they look up your Instagram <laughs> I mean, and it's nothing but here. selfies, they're thinking, right. okay, no, no interest here other than themselves. <laughs> right. So, I mean, if that's part of your brand, great, but it's, it's not for me personally. What I enjoy seeing on other people is, you know, you know, and I hate to say, cause it, you know, it kind of is a highlight right. reel, but when people give you like the big overviews, good or bad, you know, like, Hey, you know, I've been working really hard toward this goal and boom, you know, we had this great accomplishment. Awesome. Like, I'm happy for you, but I don't need you to like, tell me every day, like grinding, still grinding, still hustling. <laughs> I'm still here. Like, okay, I get it. We, you, you go to work every day. So do I, so do you and your <laughs> boss and all your coworkers and employees. Like, we all, we all do that too, which I mean, it's great. And I guess it's motivational to some people to see it. Um, I'm probably going to make a lot of people mad. I, this is probably why I stopped talking on live stream, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's true though. I don't, you know, I don't really care to see it, but like the overviews and highlights, like I am genuinely happy for people. Like if you say, Hey, we've been working on this project for X amount of time. I'm really glad we had this accomplishment. Great. You know, personal family things like you guys are having a new baby. There's an engagement. There's right. a, this awesome but but i don't think we need every detail leading up to it like i've seen people going through breakups and they're giving us the play-by-play -play of their divorce and i'm like wow this is really i feel like i'm you know in your kitchen and i shouldn't be or i'm in a courtroom or a, like a mediation and this is really inappropriate and i'm really uncomfortable and next time i see you out like i don't even know what to say to you so i mean don't put other people in that situation <laughs> right right Especially when people have kids and they start, you know, like you want them to grow up and read that stuff. Probably not. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's so tough, you know, and I'm so guilty of this because I literally just posted a photo of my nephew on Snapchat and like, I'm, I'm so guilty of this myself, but you know, you think about it, like he, maybe when he grows up, like he doesn't want his like naked baby butt on the internet. Like he doesn't get a say, you know, your children don't get, you know, well, like they have a right to privacy. I mean, they do. And so if right. you're exposing them out the gate, you know, I mean, they don't get a choice in that. They don't get a say. So kids in social media, I really think about a lot. And I like to talk like with people about a lot because, you know, I think it's fair. Like, I don't think it's fair to them. Um, right. I mean, I'm super guilty of it, but I, the people who put every moment of their lives, um, of their children's lives, I mean, online right. all the time, I like sometimes feel bad for them. Yeah, that's it's a just little me. I don't have kids, so I don't know. <laughs> right. Maybe it'll change. But... It'll change. Look, look. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard stories of like from your friends at work? Because um, I mean, you work in kind of a non-traditional setting. I do too. So, have you heard from friends who like had some issue where social media caught up with them at work, or you know, strange rules about social media at work, or anything like how social media is mixing? somewhat uncomfortably maybe with work for, you know, people, you know, or you've heard hmm. about. I mean, gosh, I guess, I mean, personally, it can kind of be weird. I guess I can, okay, I'll tell this story. God, I hate telling the story, <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell it because well, I you think it's, it you know, example, but you know, tell the story. It's you know, I'll give a bad <laughs> example about myself. Like it's okay. So I had an issue, um, at a hotel once. I had, a, I had a problem, a customer service problem with the hotel. Right. And, I, you know, what do we do when we have customer service problems? I tweeted about it. Right. And, I mean, I'm not going to give the name of the hotel or anything like that. But what ended up happening was the general manager or whoever it was at the hotel ended up looking up where I worked and called my boss to say, your employee tweeted something bad about us and they should take it down. Not like they weren't a client of ours or anything. It was like somebody else, you know, in the area, but, you know, and then I had to have this really awkward conversation about, you know, okay, you said this, what happened? What's the situation? But, you know, I was a little, I was angry. I was upset. I was embarrassed one that I'm online complaining about social media and the brand called my work to tell on me, which was awful. But, you know, so then I had to like explain like, okay, this is what happened. This is why I'm really mad. But then I was also really like, I felt like my right to privacy was completely blown open because so like what everybody else gets to complain on social media when they have a problem. And I can't just because of the industry I work in, like just because I work in a certain space, I'm not allowed to do that. And because I had my job listed in my profile, it came back to get me. Um, 
And I hate telling that story because it was so embarrassing. I'm gosh, I've been up to be honest. Like I was in tears when it happened. I was like mortified and didn't want to have to face it. Um, but you know, you do have to walk a fine line, like what you're out there, like what you put out there, people will see and they will take it and run with it if they see fit. So you have to be incredibly out what you put out there and how. And I mean, that was a personal complaint that rolled into my you know, professional life. And I had to stand by it because I merged my profiles together. Right. Well, so I mean, now they I have a separate one have... when I want to complain. <laughs> <laughs> but they shouldn't have done that. They should have tried to make it right with you. That would be the real customer service thing to do, right? I mean, not. Well, well absolutely. You complained that's what about I do the for service. So we go, what we do is we call the boss of the person who complains about service so we get no more complaints. That's not really how you're supposed to do things, right? I mean, that's what happened. I was like, I was like, I complained about their brand and now they're going to try and get me fired. This is crazy. But, right. you know, I mean, it was, I mean, I love how um, my company handled it. They were so good to me about it. You know, like they said, you, you don't have to take it down. Like you have a right as the customer, like you had a problem, you were a paying customer, like you had a right to complain. I ended up taking it down because I felt bad. I just felt I was right. embarrassed and just wanted the whole thing to go away. But um you just have to be so careful. And that's kind of where the personal professional line can get really, really blurry. So right. if you're going to be out there and this is going to be your job and you're really out there sharing these things, it can come out there. So now this story is out there for everyone to know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great story, though. I mean, it, it's sort of almost to me, like listening to it, it's it's on the company, though. Like that. Why did they call? I still like, you know. I mean, it's one step below, like, calling the person's parents and saying, you know, exactly. shame on you, right? Like, how dare you complain? Like, well, That's I stayed was, here, it, right? I mean, like. <laughs> it wasn't even that bad. It's not even like I wasn't, like, cussing and it wasn't being, like, awful. I just took a photo of my experience and came back to bite <laughs> me. So just be careful out there right, with right. what you share because it can really, I mean, people are looking at that when you don't think they are. And, and it was on Twitter. So think about, you know, people are just like shooting content into Twitter and think no one's paying attention. Well, that right. brand was. So some people are, <laughs> and we pay attention all day. You know, we, we monitor for our clients like 19 hours a day or something. So we're paying attention. So yeah. there are people out there listening, even though Twitter's floundering, drowning whatever it may be. <laughs> Not exactly following the Hug Your Haters Jay Bear uh, customer service script. <laughs> You're Tell not. Your hey, hey. hey. So maybe so, maybe it's a new method. Right, right. <laughs> so what is your take on, um, I was actually listening to a, a Gary Vaynerchuk speech and he was talking all about entrepreneurship and how like he's like, in the future, it's not going to be that cool and too many people are going for entrepreneurship when you know, they could be really good in a job as the second or the fifth person in the company. Or, you know, he talks about how like the 30th person at Facebook who went to work there is phenomenally wealthy, more so than like 99 percent of the people who start successful companies and whatever. Like, mm -hmm. where do you come down on like all this? You got to hustle. You got to have a side hustle. You got to have a, a you got to be in business for yourself. If you're working for a company, you're not really a business person and blah, blah, blah. Like, where do you come down on all that? <laughs> Um, I, you know, it's, it's funny. Cause I've like done both. I've done all of it. I've worked, right. I mean, I work for an agency now I've worked for corporate, I've done freelance. Um, and that's something that I've really wanted to do. I said, I mean, I was working for myself doing freelance work and I loved it, but you know, I really wanted to experience agency and I had I'd done corporate. I wanted to be able to take the best of all of it mm -hmm. so I could make an informed decision about what I want to do longer term. Um, I think entrepreneurs, and people who have that hustle in them, like they just can't stop. And that's right. okay. Like, I think the people who are really entrepreneurs, like you can't put them in a box. You, they okay. can't like, like, it's not, it's not that they don't want to work for people. Like they, they can't, like they can't be told what to do. It's like that kid who since couldn't sit still in class. It's the kid who can't take direction, who wasn't coachable. And they say, you know, like uncoachable, um, what uncoachable kids or unemployable adults, you know what, maybe that's not a bad thing. I mean, I mean, some people just aren't meant to fit in that box and that's okay. Um, you know, there's a lot of people, I think, jumping into it prematurely and they could be, there could be more planning involved. I mean, and there's some people who are like, no, if, if you've got to do it and you feel it, just jump in, do it right now, execute, execute, execute. Well, execution without a plan is just a flop. 
you, you can't really right. do that. So I think, um, you know, if you have like this bubbling up inside of you to be an entrepreneur, awesome, but make sure you have a plan, have a strategy. What do you want to do? Like, I would not recommend just going out and quitting your job and being like, okay, I'm an entrepreneur now and I'm going to start a business. And then day one of no employment, you know, day one without a paycheck, you're like, okay, what am I going to do now? And I right. get like, sometimes our circumstances push us in weird ways. Like when, how I kind of transitioned to casual Fridays, the job I was in previously, we, my job got outsourced to another country. Like we got acquired right. by a company in India. They were like liquidating my position and I was like strapped and I'm going, Oh my gosh, like what's going to happen? What am I going to do? And the pieces fell into me really nice. And like, I get that sometimes life puts us in really weird positions and you're like, okay, like it, everything has set me up to make this leap. You know, if that happens and you want to take that chance, awesome. Like I'm totally not ever knock anybody for doing that, but you have to prepare, like then stay up until four o'clock in the morning, writing your business plan until you have it figured out. So you can right. go in with a strategy as quickly as possible. Yeah. I mean, I think the economy is changing and like, the way we work is changing. So it's, it's not easy to say like to somebody, okay, take the safe route, go to grad school, get, get a master's, get a law degree, get a business degree, and you'll work for a company for 50 years and then retire to, you know, chances are like, even if you go the safe route, it isn't safe anymore because the companies right. are only going to be loyal to you for as long as you're providing value. And then that's it right? They're not going to stick with you through a, a slow year or, you know, you can make them a lot of money and the next day they don't need that service anymore. And it's not about finding another place for you or whatever. So um, that's not really a safe route to say, okay, I'm just going to climb the ladder. Like there is no ladder anymore. You jump around, you take. So, I mean, I think you don't have to be either I'm an entrepreneur or I'm working for a company my whole career. I think mm -hmm. it's so fluid now. You could be one, you could be the other. You can take skills from one. Um, you know, businesses need business development. They need people to come up with new products. They need all the things that people who can sell and market and all the things that, you know, an entrepreneur needs to do in, in running a small business or a startup or whatever. Well, big companies need that kind of flexibility and creativity now too. And, startups need some older people who, you know, have been through the corporate wars and understand, you know, how a board should be governed and how you get ready for an IPO and all that stuff. So I think the worlds are like, it isn't like either you're an entrepreneur and that's it. You're one of the cool kids and you go do the fun thing or you work for a company and you're going to have job security for you the, for the rest of your life. Neither one of those worlds exists except for a very small number of people anymore. I completely agree. And, you know, it is, and it, and it kills me that you're so right when you said, if you're going to be an entrepreneur and be one of the cool kids, it kills me that like, it can't be cool to work for another company. And like, you're like, oh, well, you're putting money in somebody else's pocket. Yeah. But then they're also putting money in my pocket. They're putting money right. in your pocket if you're working for them. And if you all work together collectively, why can't you all make more money? That's kind of right. how I see it when I, you know, my backgrounds in sales before I was doing sales and marketing or, or before I was doing sales and marketing, more social and marketing. Like before I was more on the content side, my job was in outside sales and I was out, you know, going out and recruiting that new business. And when I work for an agency, everything that I do, I keep that sales mindset in. So while right. I might be doing community management or I might be working on content, I think more about what kind of content can we create to drive new business, you know, what, like, what can we do with the podcast? What can we do with the newsletter? What can we do with the blog? Like, what could we do to grow this? So we all come up. I don't right. think there's anything wrong with coming up together instead of being one person who shoots to the top themselves. I mean, that's great. Um, I mean, I don't have a, see anything wrong with that. And, you know, who knows, I could end up there one day myself, but I don't think there's, you know, people knock the corporate life or nine to five life. And I think, because they're saying it's, you know what, it's boring, it's old, it's outdated. But I think a lot of the corporations are starting to flex too. You know, I know it's not all of them. I know big corporations have red tape and cubicles. Like I get it, but <laughs> a lot of the ones, I mean, I mean, I do, but you know, I worked right. for a corporation and I could work from home when I wanted to, you know, if I was there a nine to five a lot, but they let me flex. And you know, if I wanted to go work up, like have my lunch and work up the street, I could, you know, there was a little more, you know, asking, it wasn't as right. flexible, nowhere near as flexible as my job is now. But 
I made good money and, right. you know, I enjoyed what I was doing and I learned a lot and I got to work with people who had had a lot more corporate experience and they had had experiences I hadn't have. And I was able to bring that with the new opportunity, like bring that with me. So, you know, if, if you're working for a corporate, just this is my little soapbox right now. Like if you're working for an agency or a corporation, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, just as long as you are putting everything you have into it, like keep at it. There's nothing wrong with a steady paycheck and somebody else paying for most and of your benefits. health. Care. <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with getting paid whether the company has a good day or a bad day, whether whether you work hard or there's nothing to do or you sit in pointless meetings all day, you still get paid. Like when you one of the things you realize when you're working for yourself is you work whether you get paid or not, right? Like you're always work. Like you, you you have so much work that you're doing just to set up the next opportunity that you don't right. think like you go, oh, wait, if I was at a company, there would be like that meeting for two and a half hours where I'd just sit there and think about what I'm going to do after yeah. work. You know, there'd be that training that they would send me to that I don't really care. Of. You know, like there's a lot of wasted time when you work for a big company on things. And of course, you try not to waste time, their time and whatever. Right. But there's just there's there's downtime. There's you know, there's paperwork that has to be done that's sort of mindless. When you work for yourself, it's like, okay, I got to get this done. I got to get this done because I hope that I land this client or I hope I land this opportunity or I hope I sell this thing. And you know that like an X number of time you're working, you're not getting paid. You're only getting paid right. based on the amount of money you make and whatever. So um, it's not such a bad deal for people who enjoy that to know that they have a paycheck and health care and it's all taken care of. And obviously you have to perform, but you're not at the whim of the market completely. Like if the company has, like I say, the sale doesn't go through, you still get paid. Right. Right. <laughs> so, um, and I mean, you, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, but if you're like the work you're doing, it doesn't really matter. I mean, if you like the work right. you're doing, working for somebody else versus yourself, I mean, if you were doing the same thing as you would be doing for, you know, if, if you could be doing the same thing for a company as you would be doing for yourself, but your paycheck's steadier and you're still happy, like, no problem. I mean, if you see the opportunity to, to do more on your own, like, my gosh, do it. Like, I would never stand in somebody's way and say that. But, you know, I think I, I see good and bad in both. Definitely. Right, right. And I see like the way you described what you're doing with Casual Fridays. You could do that working for somebody else, you could do it running somebody else's company, whether it's the CEO, whether it's an advisor or consultant to one of the top people, or you could do that for your own company. So again, it's skills that, you know, it's not an either, either or thing. It's more like an entrepreneurial mindset. And I think that's what companies want. And they want to be leaner. They want to be quicker. They want to grasp ideas. Some of them do. Some of them give lip service to it and then you go back to the, you know, the way they've always done yeah, things. Yeah, but who needs that but it's though, not right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know you don't do a lot of live streaming, but since we were talking about the sharing kind of thing and whatever, what do you like to see when you see people doing live video shows or doing periscopes or doing any kind of like live streaming? You know, it's hard to see. I like things that add value to me, right? right? I mean, that's that's what it comes down to. Um, is the behind the scenes of your business something that adds value to me? I guess it depends on your business. Um, is your all of the you know tips and tricks for your business beneficial to me? I guess it depends if that's an area that I'm researching at the time. Right. Um, live streams that I watch on a regular basis. There's a pastor called Real Talk Kim. She provides insight and value to my life. I subscribe. I watch that. I follow. I mean, that's really one of the only streamers, honestly, that I really like commit and spend a lot of time watching. Uh, but that's what adds value to my life. So that's what I really enjoy watching. It's inspirational. It's motivational. It's the kick that I need personally. Um, now, I really, from a streamer's perspective, I used to do, I mean, when... I don't know if, are we allowed to say this? Like blab when blab was around. Is you were like That's a dirty turn? word on this. <laughs> I don't know. But when, I mean, that was around, I used to do um, like a weekly 
chat with some girls and we would call it, it was called blabby hour. And we right, would, right. you know, have our cocktails at five o'clock and we would just discuss industry trends. And you know what? I really enjoyed that getting to kind of have that collaborative conversation and that, that added value to me as well. It wasn't just me sitting on a soapbox or, you know, the, a panel of us sitting on a soapbox preaching to other people. We would come up with a topic or collective topics and then let other people jump in and involve or and get involved in the conversation as well. And especially because we all worked remote. So like the thing that was really tough for us was that we didn't get to kind of collaborate with people as much as we would like to. So that kind of collaborative streams, I really find a lot of value in and I like to see that as well. So like this, I guess is, you know, it's collaborative. There's two of us instead of me right. being on Periscope, just talking to my comments. Right, right. Have you thought about like what kind of show of you know, you had you had all the time in the world, or you had a superstar sitting next to you, or what, like, what is the a show that you don't you're not seeing that you think, wow, you know, so I think live video or you know Facebook Live or Periscope or you know a talk show platform on on live streaming would be perfect for this kind of show. Have you have you ever thought like, this is a show somebody's got to create? I honestly haven't. That's a really good question. And maybe I'll file that and write a blog post about it because I, I don't have anything, honestly, off the top of my head. Um, but I do think that we can see with, the, with corporate and a lot of the bigger brands, right. I think that they could really take advantage of it. And I wish thing people like that were taking more advantage of it. We see a lot of entrepreneurs streaming daily and we see a lot of small businesses you know, going through it, but you know, some of the bigger brands behind the scenes, that would be awesome. But I guess I'm going like so off the topic here, but there's a smaller brand. Like my idea is like, this is the thing with me. Like my, I like my thoughts go like this and then I bring them full circle. They all come back together. Um, and then I'm entertaining. So, <laughs> uh, Oh, you were finished with the thought or no? Right. Well, no, but I was going to say the bigger brands need to do it, but I've also seen a lot of smaller brands doing great things with it. So, okay, this is where I was going to go with it. So there's a, right. there's a smaller clothing boutique in Ohio who has been doing an awesome job um, live streaming. They're called Sugar and Spice. They are awesome. They've been really diving into live streaming. They have a local girl who does broadcasting for Fox Sports come on and she goes through the clothes and she goes through the store and she talks through them all and she does an awesome job. So what I would like to see is the bigger brands doing that. That's what I meant to say when I went, oh, but small, wait, big. That's so right, right. That's how I'm tying it together. So if they could kind of come in, you know, if you were with Coca-Cola and you went through, you know, your testing room and kind of say like, okay, you guys, these are all of the things we're working on. What would you like to see more of? You could do your R and D right through Facebook Live. If right, you really right. To. And and you kind of bring the customer in, like you give them access to something they would never see otherwise. Exactly. Um, do you like seeing like people are now there's a lot more um, shows that are kind of more produced, right? People are adding graphics. They're using software like Wirecast and OBS and they're doing, you know, you're seeing lower third graphics and you're seeing changing shots and multiple cameras and things like that. Do you like seeing more produced stuff on live stream or do you prefer just, you know, the cell phone or just, you know, going with whatever, whatever you're doing, just doing it? I think it depends what your objective is, because for me, live streaming has replaced TV. And I think it is for a lot of people. I'm on my phone more than I am on TV. And even when I am watching TV, my phone is in front of my face. I mean, I, it's kind of like looking up over the phone and the laptop to try and pay attention to it. So, I mean, the things that are a little more produced, I don't have a problem with them. I think it's really interesting. I wish I had the skill set. So if somebody wants right. to teach me how to do all that cool stuff, hit me up because <laughs> I'm super interested. Um, but I think it's just going to become more produced from there. I mean, there is something cool about that authentic raw piece of it um, or the, you know, I mean, you're sitting, like, you're looking at my background, like my little right. curtains over here. Like, I mean, that's cool, right? That's a side of me you don't you're usually get to see. My fancy studio back here. <laughs> right. I mean, like, okay, you got like my blue walls, like, awesome. Okay, that's a side of me that, you know, these people, like, most people would normally get to see, which is really great and cool. But, <laughs> right. you know, I, I could still offer the same insight, you know, if you care, but like, I could offer right. the same thoughts if I had like, you know, a studio or a green screen behind me. So I guess it just depends if the content brings value, all of the fluffy things around it, I guess don't really matter, but it, it is really interesting. And I do think it's kind of cool as they add those things. 
Yeah, and I think you can have elements of both, right? Like you're live mm -hmm. streaming, so you can you can be doing it from your home with a, just an ordinary background, but you could still put a graphic up that helps catch people's attention or whatever. Because I think like now that more people are watching on Facebook, sometimes when they're scrolling, like you know, I like the way Blue Jeans presents the video in like very high quality. But sometimes mm -hmm. I think, well, it'd be nice to have some sort of border or something that catches people's attention, or you know, some type of graphic or change from 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 one shot to another or whatever. So, I think there's again, I'm I'm feel like I'm very balanced today. Like I'm everything's like, <laughs> oh, I see one side, I see the other <laughs> side. So, um. <laughs> Okay, you know what? There's enough. Um, there's enough polar going right, on right, right. in the news and the media right now. We can ride down the middle today. That's okay. Right, right, you know, right. we're just like we're just good vibes over here, like happy See, feelings and smiles. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah, there's a little election or something coming up tomorrow. Yeah, going on tomorrow. Yeah, we'll you know, leave we can that just, alone, we just, right? <laughs> we just be good vibes today. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you are you a sports fan? I am. Um, oh, do, tough, yeah. tough, tough World Series, huh? You really ought to bring it up. Like, Sore subject. It was, <laughs> it was awful. Um, when they were losing those last couple games, my, like I was pouting, like hardcore, like sat down, arms crossed, like couldn't move, just like pouty face. Um, <laughs> I was out when they won. They cut the TVs like right before the end of that play. It was tough. People were grouchy for a, a week. I'm still a little grouchy. We have the Cavs though, so yes, you got the basketball. And they're on fire. We did get that, and they're on fire. That was one. Of, the championship was like one of the greatest days of my life. It really wow. was. I was with good people in a good place, and I didn't have a lot of work that week, and we had a lot of fun. <laughs> that was a great series. That was a lot of fun. That series. So, thank you so much for coming on. Just if you have anything you're you're working on that you want to talk about, um, Bree Kelly. K E L L E Y is the website, BrieKelly.com, at Smart Sweet Brie. Sweet as in S U I T E, right? Yes. How, how yes, did it you is. get that, that Twitter handle? Oh, it's my other embarrassing story. You should just rename this stream to all the embarrassing social media faux pas Brie has had ever. <laughs> Real, like. Well, maybe I should do a stream just about that and I should educate people on all the things you shouldn't do in social media. Um, so a company that I worked for had a, um, so I had a separate Twitter when I started, like I had a personal Twitter, um, but I started working for a company and they had a smart suite of solutions. So they wanted us to have branded handles just to push the content. So that's where the smart suite Brie came from because we were pushing branded smart sweet content for that company. And I was not anticipating getting as involved in social media as I did when I had that handle. So it just escalated really quickly. And everyone keeps telling me like, you really need to change that. And um, yeah, my name is taken. So mm -hmm. until, and I email her, I got her email address. It's, it's a account is inactive and I email her like once a month. So if anyone has any tips on how to get my name, please let me know and I will change it. But I Have don't want to. I haven't yet. I, I heard that's a lost cause. Okay. Um, you know, so I would I would change it um, if I could get my name. Otherwise, like I don't really see another reason to like make it's the switch unique, and then have everybody right? confused. It's well, yeah, unique. I get to tell like, it really memorable. <laughs> and I when I first saw my... it, I was like. Wow, what an ego. She's saying she's smart, <laughs> she's sweet, she's brie. Oh, wow, fabulous. And then I realized, well, sweet spelled differently. It's probably like a, a brand or something. Yes, so like, isn't yeah. it so embarrassing? Like, and I didn't even like, and you know what? Like when we created it, because everybody else's was the same handle. So like right. I didn't like the sweet thing, like totally went over my head and I was like, okay. And I made it. And then people started like cracking jokes about it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. Like I have this, I should like, I have this sign, like smart, sweet Brie. Like my sister created for me. And I'm like, this is so embarrassing. Like, oh my gosh. But so that's another thing. Don't make a branded handle unless you really yeah. have to. Or have a use personal handle at the same time and use that one mostly, except when you have to tweet on behalf of the company, well, right? Yeah. So I had a personal handle, but 
things just like started popping off so much on one end, I wasn't going to be like, okay, can the 10,000 of you like come over here now? Like I just, I can't. <laughs> I'm all in full well, you know? Hey, it's working for you. So congratulations you know. on all the great stuff that you're doing. Um, it's great talking to you. Great learning all about um, what you're doing with the podcast and with um, casual Fridays and social media day, San Diego, where you actually ended up getting a job with casual Fridays before you went on to help produce the event. So that's a pretty cool story. So thanks so much for coming on and we'll be back next Monday with another episode of live stream stars. Also, I'll be on the show dot live on Wednesday, 4 PM Eastern with Mitch Jackson and Jen Hoverstead, the show dot live. Looking forward to it. Have a great night, everybody.